Everything we create in this video can be found in the important links section of the description if it's easier for you. Otherwise, we first need to make sure we have the Explorer, which can be enabled through the View tab at the top left of the screen. From here, we can open up the Starter Player, click the plus button next to Starter Player Scripts, and add a local script inside. Anything in this folder will be automatically given to each player upon joining the game. We can then open up the local script, and adjust the size of the text by holding Control if you're on Windows or Command if you're on Mac and scrolling up or down. We can then get rid of everything inside and get started. We're going to start by referencing two important services for this feature, and the first of which is the Starter GUI, which we can reference by saying Local Starter GUI, so the word on the left is how we'll reference it later on in the script, and we're going to make this word equal to game colon get service, and inside the parentheses and quotation marks, we're going to type in the name of the actual service. So instead of typing this out every single time we wanted to talk about it later on, we could just say starter GUI. I'm going to follow the same idea with the player service. And the reason we're referencing these two is because the starter GUI will allow us to create and send a notification, while the player service will allow us to see whenever someone joins the game. In addition to this, we can use the player service to see whoever has this local script. So I'm going to create a variable that is called player, and I'm going to make it equal to players.localPlayer. This will be very important to make sure that we only send a notification to the right players. So if one of my friends joins the game, it's going to make sure that I only get the notification and not everybody in the server. In order to make this possible, we need to create two different functions that will automatically do things for us. So the first of which, I'm going to start by saying local function, and the name of this function is going to be called create notification. And this will handle creating the notification and sending it to the player. So I'm going to add these parentheses at the end, and then I'm going to hit enter afterward. And this end will let the function know whenever it needs to stop so it doesn't keep running on forever and ever. However, we're going to get back to this later because we first need to see whenever someone joins the game. So now we can go down a few lines and reference the player service that we defined on line two. And what we could do from here is utilize an event to listen for something to happen. In this case, we could use the player added event. So the script will be listening for whenever a player is added into the player service. So whenever someone joins the game, this event will be activated and we can connect it to a function that will check if this player is friends with the person that's already in the game. So because this function is activated from someone joining, we can reference the new player that joined the game. Now make sure the parameter name is different from the variable we created on line four, or else the script is going to get confused about which one we're talking about. So the word inside of the parentheses of the function over here is going to reference this new player. And now that we've done this, the first thing we could do inside of the function is check if they're friends. So I'm going to reference the player that is already in the game. And now we're going to check if they are friends. So player is friends with. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to reference the new player that joined. And then I'm going to type in dot user ID. And what this will do is it'll ask the Roblox website, OK, is this player friends with this player? And if they are friends on Roblox, this will say true. So that means that, yep, they are friends. But if they aren't friends, it's going to return false. So I'll be saying, no, they aren't friends. However, because this is asking the Roblox website something, which is outside of the game, it doesn't always end up working, or at least based off of this developer form post that I found. So in order to make sure that it works properly, we are going to wrap this inside of a P call. And that is basically a protected function. And I'll explain more about that in a moment, but we first need to create a few different variables to make sure that we get it to work properly. So right here, I'm going to start by saying local success, and then I'm going to add a comma, and then we'll type in friend check. And above this, we're going to create two more variables that will do different things. The first of which is going to be called retry attempts. And the next one is going to be called retry delay. So what we're going to be doing here is we are going to be trying over and over again until this code is successful in order to make sure that the script doesn't end up breaking. So we're going to make retry attempts equal to the amount of times you want the script to keep trying over and over again before stopping. So that means that if this keeps on erroring or it doesn't end up working, the function will stop after this amount of time. So I'll just say five times. And the retry delay is how long you want it to wait before trying again. So in this case, I could just say one second in between attempts. 
And before I explain these two right here, we need to adjust this line of code really quick. So right below this, I'm going to make these two variables right here equal to pcall. And inside of this pcall, I'm going to create a function. And inside of this function, we are going to add this line of code right here. So now I'll explain what all of this is. When we run a function inside of a pcall, a couple of different things happen. The first thing that happens is that the code inside of this function will end up running. But afterward, the variables that we placed here will receive different values. The first variable we have, which in this case is success, will have a value stored in it that lets us know if the function ran properly without any errors taking place. So if there weren't any errors in the code, then that means that success will be equal to true. However, if there were errors, then success will be equal to false. The second variable is going to refer to anything that we returned from the function. So in this case, we're returning the value that we get from this line of code. And as explained earlier, this will either return true or false, depending on if the player is friends with the person that joined the game. So that means if this function runs properly without any errors, it's going to be true. And then if the two players are friends, then it'll also be true. And this is important to make sure that we only activate the create notification function if both of these things are true. So what we could do down below is we could check if it was successful and if the two players are friends, and if this condition is met, then we can activate the function called create notification and send the new player through. And before we go and work on that function, we first need to add a little bit more to this. So now that we have the framework of this down, we are going to repeat the code inside of here. So what we're gonna do is say, while not success, so while this isn't successful, and if the amount of retry attempts that we have is greater than zero, then we're going to do everything inside of this code block. So if I bring this over here, that means that everything inside of this space is going to run over and over again while this isn't successful, and so long as we have more than zero retry attempts. So now that we have this out of the way, we can go on over to the create notification function and get closer to completing this script. So because we activated the create notification and we sent a value through, in this case it was the player that joined, we need to make sure that we reference it inside of these parentheses. So we're going to create another parameter and just so it lines up properly, we're going to also make it new player. So now we'll have a reference to the player that is friends with the person that is already in the game. And the first thing we actually need to do inside this function is create another pcall because we are going to be accessing the image of this player's avatar. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. So here I'm gonna say local success, and then afterward I'm going to say avatar, whoops, avatar icon. And then the third one is going to be is ready. And these are just going to stand for the two different values that are returned, because this one will be the actual icon that is returned from the function, and this will determine whether or not it's ready to be used inside of a GUI. So I'm gonna make this equal to pcall and then another function. And inside of here, I'm going to reference the player service and I'm going to call get user thumbnail async. And then we're going to put in three different values into the parentheses here. And the first of which is the new player's user ID. And the other two are going to be different values that we specify for the size of the image and the type of thumbnail that we get. So right above this function, we'll create two more variables, and the first of which is going to be called image type. Another one is going to be called image size. So I'm gonna make the first one equal to enum.thumbnail type. And then once we add another dot here, we'll be able to see all the different kinds of thumbnail types. So I'm going to show on screen right now the differences between all of them. So we have the avatar bust, the avatar thumbnail, and the headshot. In this case, we're going to use the headshot because that is just going to be the character's face. So I'm going to add that right here. And as far as the image size goes, we're gonna do a very similar thing. We're gonna say enum, but in this case, we'll say dot thumbnail size, and we can add another dot, and we have all of these different options, but here we'll choose this option. So now that we have these two defined, we can continue by adding these variables into parentheses right over here. So afterward, I'm gonna add a comma, 
and then I'll type in image type to reference the variable that we created. And then I'll do the same thing except with the size of the image next. So if we go ahead and we can return this. So now if this happened to be successful, then that will be true. We'll have the avatar icon and the script will tell us if it's ready to be used or not. So the next thing we're going to do is create a template that will describe how the notification will look. So right below this, I'm going to say a local template table, and I'm going to make it equal to a table of different properties. Now we have a few different properties for the notification, the first of which is going to be the title. So this is going to be the primary text that shows up at the very top in bold. The next one is the text that shows up right below it, which is not bolded, but it allows us to display more information there. Afterward, we can add an icon, which in this case is going to refer to the thumbnail of the avatar. And after that, it'll be the duration of the notification, so how long it ends up lasting. And sorry, wait, we don't need to add these commas right here afterward. We'll be adding it after the value on the right side. So we're gonna make these equal to different things. The first of which is going to be the title, so in this case, we're just going to make this equal to a friend joined. So this will be the text that shows up in bold at the top of the notification. And right afterward, now we can add a comma to separate these from one another. So next, the text that we want to show on this notification is the name of the player that joined. So what I can then do is say new player dot name. So we're going to refer to that player's name. And then we're basically going to connect this to some other text. So we're going to use concatenation. So this is basically going to dynamically fill in the player's name alongside the other text here. So I could say the new player is here. So that means if Roblox joined the game and they're on your friends list, it would say Roblox is here. If Builderman joined, it would say Builderman is here and so on and so forth. And now afterward, we have the icon. And now we're automatically going to set this to the avatar icon that we get from this function. But just in case it ends up failing, we're going to add a default icon, which will in this case be the Roblox avatar. So just because this is probably going to be more of a pain to write out, and I have already written something here for this, I'll put this in the description so it's easier to copy and paste this line of code. We are basically going to be using the RBX thumb or the RBX thumbnail content type in order to reference the Roblox profile and get the image of their avatar. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this over here and place it into the table. And essentially what this is doing is that this is going to specify the type of image that we're getting. The ID is going to be the player's user ID. And then of course we have width and height as well. So that means that if the function up here ends up failing, this icon will remain in its place. And afterward we have the duration, which will be how long it lasts. And just for testing purposes, I'm going to keep this at like 15 seconds, but you can always change this to whatever you'd like. So now that we have that, we can do one final thing and this will pretty much be done. Oh, and actually, whoops, we have two different things that we're going to do here. The first of which we're going to check if this was successful or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if success and if there was an avatar icon that was generated and if it's ready to be used, so and is ready. Then what we could do is we could change this value inside of the table. So let's say template table. We're going to refer to icon and we're going to make this equal to the avatar icon that we got from the function. So this will override that default value. And then the actual final thing we could do right here is we can reference the starter GUI and we can call set core and then we can send this notification utilizing the template table that we created. So now that this is all nice and done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Roblox website and I'm going to test this out. But first, I'm going to make sure I go over to file at the top left and I click on publish to Roblox. And this will ensure that you get the most updated version of your place as a playable version on the Roblox website. If you only clicked save to Roblox, that will only save it inside of Roblox Studio. So now I can go on over and test this out. All right, so I'm now on the Roblox website and I'm going to join the game. And then I will proceed to join on my other account. So now I'm joining on my other account. As we can see, it joined the game at the bottom right. We see a friend joined. Asians for the win is here. So there we go. We have the notification. It's going to last a little bit longer. And there we go. We have the working notification inside of our game. And I'll just show you it disappeared as well. There you go. 
So since you've made it this far, post a comment down below to suggest what tutorial I should create next, along with any feedback about what I could do better to make these tutorials more enjoyable and easier for you to learn from. Remember to like the video if this helped, along with checking out my Roblox Studio tutorial series that will have dozens of other useful videos through the card at the top right of the screen, or via the playlist in the description below. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day, night, or whatever time it is there for you. And I hope to see you next time, so bye-bye!